Hi, so uh, I've got this idea for a hi-hat patch I want to try out. Uh, basically, uh, seeing as uh, music consists of notes, for almost all notes you've got a few attributes they have. They have a particular pitch they're at and they last a particular length and they'll be at a particular volume and that kind of defines most notes. With drums there's an exception so they don't really have a pitch or a length, they just have a volume and you know this is which drum sound it is. And for hi-hats in particular they're an exception to that exception because with hi-hats uh, you've got two different instruments sort of although it's kind of sort of just one in as much as there's two different sounds with different uh, lengths of decay uh, you've got the open hi-hat and the closed hi-hat with a very short decay and you've got the kind of rhythmic interplay of them as the short one can still cut off the long one they're mutually exclusive that it will just stop the other one from happening. So this is kind of hard to explain to a computer and one of the ways you can kind of do that is you can take all of the open hi-hat notes and you can just uh, make them longer so that they all happen to stop when the closed hi-hat starts which you can do but that involves a lot of manual work so it's not really an ideal solution so I want to see if there's a better way of doing it First I'll show you that way of doing it just so you can see what you know is a bit too time consuming to do. So I'm just going to draw on some uh, hi-hat notes in Reaper here. So I'm going to make uh, a long hi-hat here and then uh, a short close hi-hat and then a much shorter long one and another short closed one. So I'm manually here uh, making the length of each open hat last until the uh, close hi hat gets in the way of it, so they're, I'm manually making them mutually exclusive, which works, but there's a lot of tedious changing the lengths of these. So, first, what I do here with the drum sounds is item processing and explode by note row. So, the open and close hats are on different channels, but we've still got the different lengths there, so they'll be mutually exclusive. And now I can wire up a patch. Okay, so say we have a note comes in. Uh, through the gate here and uh, see we've got some white noise with me white noise okay we've got some white noise goes into uh, the CV in here and we've got uh, an ADSR envelope generator which outputs to the VCA so what happens is whenever uh, the note starts uh, it draws a, a shape with this envelope generator which changes the volume of some white noise. Oh, what have I done wrong? Uh, oh yeah, turn on the compressors. Uh, it should be loud. That should be down, that should be up. Uh, oh yeah, it's too loud. Oh yeah, and it's my usual thing I do wrong when I forget to actually record it. Perfect. Sounds like a war there. It does, sorry about that. So what's happening here is uh, for the open eye hat uh, we've got it going through an ADSR envelope generator and the decay is quite long so it takes a while for it to uh, you know, go quiet again uh, unless the note goes off in which case it's got uh, absolutely no release at all whatsoever it's completely instantaneous so as soon as we let go of the note it immediately goes quiet to let the uh, close hat take over. So if I were to record this, let's record this quickly. Uh, let's see, I'll drag these along. Okay, so I can record the open hat. And then we can switch to the closed hat. Okay, come back here a sec. Uh, for the closed hat, I adjust it so that the decay is much shorter because it's a closed hat. There you go, record that. 
So that's a very short piece that's only like a few seconds long, but you can see the hi-hats last longer than the close hats. Uh, it all sounds okay. The only issue is it took ages to uh, make these notes longer. Because there's only two, that's fine. But when it's an actual three, four minute song, that takes ages to lengthen all the notes out by hand. So what else can we do instead? Okay. Uh, Just as yeah. a, an aside here, you know Logic's got a function that says shorten all notes, make no overlapping notes feature. Oh, that's neat. I'll look into that. Yeah, very cool. Ah, I should do it that way, shouldn't I? <laughs> I bet I'm going to find out now there are much quicker ways of doing it. So here's the original thing, and what I'm going to do this time is not change the length. So this is how it would normally appear in the composition. They're all short because they're drums, we don't care how long they are. And uh, I'll do my usual thing where I split uh, the uh, drums by the notes. And what I'm going to do this time is take those close hi-hats uh, which ones are these? Uh, no, these are the open ones. Okay, I'm going to take the open ones and I'm going to make them much higher in pitch. And I'm going to take the closed ones and make them much lower in pitch. And what I'm going to do is use the quote-unquote pitch uh, to control the time it takes to decay. So I can record them all in one go. This has another advantage, uh, which is that I can record the closed hats and the open hats all in one go, not in two separate passes. Which means if I'm changing the sound dynamically, uh, I can just change the sound once and I won't have to worry about trying to replicate it on a second pass, which I wouldn't manage to do anyway. So, we, instead of this, we use uh, the voltage controlled decay, which doesn't do anything anywhere near as fancy as attack decay sustain release, it's just decay but we can change how long that decay lasts. So by default, we set it to how long we want the closed hat to last. Uh, sorry, back here, please. So, right. so we uh, can make the gate, which is acting as a trigger. We can make that output to here. Actually, we've got a trigger, that's even better. Uh, so the trigger outputs to the voltage control decay and I want to listen to it. There we go. Okay, so they all sound like closed hats now. And we can make the pitch go sent to, we can send the pitch information. Uh, if I grab another wire, we can send the pitch, which is here, to the, uh, the CV for the decay. So the higher the pitch, the longer it lasts. That to me actually sounds much worse. So I think this did not work, so now we know. <laughs> so, yeah. It. Yeah, that's where we're leaving it. It didn't work. But this is the thing, right? It is uh, very much important to experiment with things and try things out. And a lot of the time it doesn't work, but then you know. Instead of just assuming something doesn't work, it's kind of important to experiment and try for yourself and see if it works. Um, quite a lot of the time I try doing something and it doesn't work, but it does something else cool that I then like fired away for later. Uh, there's that time I was trying to make a kind of reverberated snare sounds like you had in the 80s, the, the short um, compressed skated reverb snare. And um, I tried replicating that with the spring reverb and I thought instead of uh, running it through a gate, I'd run it through an ADSR envelope generator so that it just makes it quiet earlier. And it sounded nothing at all like the 80s reverb snare trick, but it sounded weird and interesting in its own right. So yeah, now we know that I think probably what's happening is it's just kind of maybe combining the, the two sounds at the same time, like the, the two volumes are kind of, I think the um, capacitor is not getting fully drained, so it's just kind of charging it back up to too much or something. Yeah. You would probably know that more than me, uh, Nina, but yeah, it, it, it did not work and now we know. So I won't do that. <laughs> now we know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's it. That, that's me, Zoe Blade, finding out that this did not work. Now we know. <laughs>